Take a look at this nice 3D navbar animation I have here. This is built with just HTML and CSS. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build this so you can learn some CSS tips. This is what we'll be starting with on the right here. This is the HTML on the left. Here I have a UL and then I have a bunch of LIs. And in each of these LIs, I have an anchor tag. Now in each of these anchor tags, you can see I have this Zindex 5, Zindex 4. This is so that the first link will be above the second link. The second link will be above the third link. And so on to the end and then for our styles here we have a style for the ul and then we have a style for the anchor tags display block padding and i'm using a custom property here because it will be more flexible for me to change the color by the way if you'd love to learn more about custom properties i have a video on it i'll leave it in the video description for you to check out here i have a background color and i use the custom color property and then here i have a transition for the left and for the background color and the first thing we're going to do is that for this ul we're going to apply a transform and here we're going to apply a skew y and let's say this is minus 15 degrees now we have the skew y you can also do a skew x skew x will skew along the x axis but that is not what we want so i'm going to go back to skew y now we have this now i'm going to use before and after pseudo elements if you'd also love to learn more about before and after pseudo elements i have a video on that i'll leave it in the video description also so here we're going to say a before and for this before we have content with the empty string this would have a width of 20 pixels to have a height of 100 percent it will have a background color and here i'm going to use the custom color property so i'm going to use color mix color mix is a function in css that allows you to mix two colors together i'm going to mix my colors in the srgb color space which is standard red green blue and i'm going to mix the value of the color custom property with black and i'm going to mix it with a black of 20 percent so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to have a darker shade of the color here. Then this will have a position of absolute. And let's say this have a left of zero and a bottom of zero. Now, if you come here, you can now see the darker shade, right? So that is why I'm using the custom color property here. If I change this to blue now, you can see I have a darker shade of blue here. So using custom properties allows you to easily customize values. Okay, now that I have this, I'm going to do left minus 20 pixels so that it can come out and now that it's out i'm going to apply a transform with the skew y of 45 degrees skewing along the y axis again okay now we have this skewing on 45 degrees and then for the bottom here i can make this bottom 10 pixels great it is now at the edge i can now do one for the after pseudo element so instead of repeating myself i'm just going to come here and do a before for a after content with empty string i also want to have this background color with a darker shade of the custom color property and a position of absolute yeah i think this is pretty much what i want to apply on both of them now coming to the after here i'm going to use a transform and i'm going to do skew x this time around 45 degrees this should have a height of 20 pixels a width of 100 percent and now if we try this it's not working okay Okay, it's not working because i have this zero here i can remove that zero and i can remove this line from here since this is applied to both of them okay now if we refresh now we have the top here so now let's position this top up here so here i can have a left of minus 10 pixels if you're wondering where i got minus 10 pixels from i already practiced this before this video so i know it's 10 pixels that will position it at the right place and then i can have a top of minus 20 pixels if i come here great it's not now at the top if you try minus 15 pixels you can see it comes to the left like this so i already knew minus 10 was going to work we have our 3d looking nice now let's add the animation for when you hover so here i'm going to say when you hover on an anchor tag i'm going to change the left to minus 20 pixels by default the left is zero and here i apply a transition on the left so when you hover you have a left of minus 20 pixels and now watch when you hover on this minus 20 pixels this 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 you can even make this as ridiculous as minus 100 pixels and okay, now we're beginning to have some hover problems because we're hovering and not hovering hovering and not hovering let me just make this 20 pixels to avoid such problems now let's add color to our animation so we're going to say that when you hover on a link change the custom color property to red you can see again why i'm using custom properties here because it's easier when i change this to red it's going to apply 
apply here where I use the color custom property and it's also going to apply here where I use the color custom property. So now we refresh, see this turns to red and then we have this nice 3D effect. Now instead of just doing this for hover, I can also do this for focus so that when you hover, you have this and also when you focus, you have this. I'm using my tab to focus. Let me remove this outline so that it looks much nicer. So now I'm using my tab. You can see how nice 3D. Now instead of doing A hover and A focus like this, I can even improve this by saying A is focus hover. So the is pseudo class in CSS allows you to apply multiple selectors to a selector. So here we have this selector and then we have is and we now apply multiple selectors like focus, hover and you can apply as much valid CSS selectors here and if any of those CSS selectors match these styles will be applied. Now you're probably wondering why would I ever want to do this in my website? Well you can choose to do this in your website or not but the purpose for making this tutorial isn't just for you to make this in your website but to also teach you one or two CSS tips that you can apply whenever the need arises. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned some CSS tips from this. Let me know in the comments what you learned. And if you'd also love to see the code for this demo, I have it on my website decode.com slash CSS demos. I'll leave a link below so you can check it out. Please give this video a like, share with others and subscribe for more CSS tutorials like this.